Hey, everybody. Welcome into another episode of your WCPO High School Insider Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Dyer. Pleased to be joined today by uh, two area teams, the Sycamore football team and the Indian Hill football team. Kind enough to join us here at the Kenwood Town Center Chick-fil-A. Before we start to talk football, I want to definitely thank Chick-fil-A operator Garth Truder for hosting this special episode today. Thanks again, Garth, for all the hospitality. And as always, uh, this High School Insider podcast is presented by our local Chick-fil-A restaurants where the winning play is always chicken. Download the app today for extra points. And as I mentioned just a a second ago, we're uh, pleased to be joined first by the Sycamore football team. Uh, Sycamore head football coach Scott Dottillo to my left, and I'm going to name some of the other players that are here as well. We have Apollo Ford. We also have Nick Stevenson, Noah Blaze, and we also have Jordan McConnell, all seniors here for the Aviators and uh, getting ready to start the season. They open the season August 30th uh, against Loveland and um, certainly going to be a uh, a season worth uh, a lot of expectations for the aviators. So, Coach, I want to bring you in on the discussion here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, tell us, first of all, what you like most about the aviators this preseason. Uh, so far as preseason, I would say it even extended into uh, the off season. back when we were still in school, is, is the energy this group brings. Uh, we are returning a lot of seniors, a lot of guys that played a ton last year, and even as sophomores. And And that experience, I think, is going to be very valuable. But the energy and excitement um, that these guys as captains have brought to our our early practices has been different than in years past. And and because of that, I think a lot of the off the field, the intangible kind of qualities of a team are going to be present this year. Can you step back for a second, Scott, and believe it's year 14 for you here at Sycamore? I mean, uh, bigger picture, what, what's this been like for you just uh, a decade plus now here with Sycamore? No, it, it has gone real fast. When you say 14 years, that makes me feel really old <laughs> is what it makes me feel. But uh, no, it's been a blast. It's a tremendous community. Uh, we moved our family here last year because of it. And, uh, you know, we, we get to work with quality people, great kids. And, um, you know, and the football is fun. we got competitive kids that like to play, and, and I think we've proven that over the years. And uh, talking to some of the players here uh, before we went on air um, this afternoon and uh, just telling me about this senior class has really been one of those classes that you guys, you know, you've been waiting for this opportunity. Jordan, first of all, tell me about uh, what you like most about this team and this group returning. Um, this year, I think what in- interests me the most is uh, the energy that we have. We have... We have like a a vibe that goes around this team and we're all ready to be there, all ready to play at all times. And we all have love for each other. So I think I think that's what's the best thing about this year. Noah, what's what's kind of the vibe that you get from a defensive standpoint? Uh, I mean, we all want to play fast, physical football. I mean, that's what you have to do to be on defense. And I think we're bringing that this year. Nick, kind of take me through the past couple of years here. Just obviously you guys were 6-4 and four a year ago, narrowly missed the playoffs there week 10, but uh, how hungry is this team right now? Um, we've all, I know personally this class have wanted it since we lost to X when we were like freshmen. That's our goal is to get at least that far, but I mean, it's just all around good. Like we all, we're all just hungry for it. We've been waiting a long time to start winning games and go a long way in the playoffs. It was kind of funny. I was kind of rattling off some of the opponents. It's like, when's your Mason game? And Apollo knew right away. He's like, you know, I knew which week was which opponent. But uh, how much have you been looking forward to this opportunity, Apollo? I've been looking forward for that opportunity to play there again since, we, since that field goal, we, since we lost <laughs> to them. I've been waiting all offseason, grinding all offseason for all these games, for all these 10 guaranteed games we got left. And Coach, uh, obviously the GMC in the spotlight a lot this uh, preseason. Just the, the sheer talent and the number of teams and players that have not only garnered um, you know, local re- uh, recruiting rankings and, and, and you know, maybe hype around the, the area in the state, but just nationally as well. Um, how do you kind of approach, uh, obviously it's one week at a time, you have Loveland on, on your schedule first, but uh, when you start looking at that GMC schedule, knowing you have eight games every year, um, what, what do you kind of expect this year out of, out of the conference? Well, as always, the conference is very good. Um, as always, there's multiple Division I players. Um, as always, there's 
good coaching and quality coaching. Um, and this year it's stepped up a notch a little bit. I mean, it's, it's going to be really, uh, really a grind. The league's really good, but it always is. But our approach is we're going to worry about us. We're going we're gonna to play as fast as we can. We're going to play football the right way. Uh, which is with technique, with discipline, with structure, and we have talent too. And that's, that's the thing I think that sometimes um, gets overshadowed when you may not have that marquee Division I guy that garners all the attention is, it, you know, that means he's a really good recruit and he's probably a really good re player, but we play high school football. We don't play college football. So we need to be really good at high school football. And by all indication, we will. Take me inside your program a little bit because I think, Scott, you garner so much respect around the city year in and year out for what your teams have accomplished. Take me to that formula, that preparation, that work that you put in, and maybe these guys can allude to it a little bit, but what's been kind of your blueprint over the past few years of getting the most out of your team? I just think, I just believe in doing things the right way. Um, you know, when, when you have kids with talent, and I think every year I've been there, we've had very good talent. I, I, and I think we, get, we don't get the, you know, the kids don't get the credit for that enough. They, they work really hard, they're very committed, and they are very talented um, over the entire 14 years. Um, but I have a great coaching staff. They've been with me forever. They were with me at Fairfield 15, 16, 17 years ago. So there's a lot of continuity and they believe the same way that, that I do and the program does that, you know, we're gonna develop kids. We're gonna take kids. We're gonna try to get them in the right spots. We're gonna practice everybody. I mean, there's not a kid on our team that stands on the sidelines. I mean, they are repping constantly. And by embracing all of that, kids develop and by the time their bodies are ready to do it, they've been instructed the proper way, they play the right way and um, you know, it's a challenge for us to put individual classes in a position because of the size of our school compared to the others in our league. But when they're all 10th, 11th, and 12th graders, if we're doing it the right way, we can field a really talented, good football team. And, and I think that's been very important, the continuity and, and just the commitment to developing kids. You brought these guys for a reason, Coach. I'd like to kind of go through each one of these guys that you brought up here and uh, maybe kind of say something about uh, each one of them and what they've meant to the program the past few years. I'm going to start with to your left there with Apollo. Yeah, with Apollo, um, you know, well, first of all, all four of them are, are captains this year. They're our leaders. Um, you know, they represent everything we want to be represented with our, with our program. And and, and we got a lot of kids that year. We'll probably add to this list as the summer continues of guys. But, but starting with Apollo, high energy. I mean, probably the emotional leader of our team. Um, incredibly fast, incredibly committed. Um, played running back, just talk the, the, back to the development. He was a running back when he was a sophomore, but also played defense because we knew that, that he had that in him. And he took over the starting spot last year. And, and, um, and he'll, be a, he'll be an all-league caliber player this year without question. And then to his left, Nick Stevenson. He's uh, tough and gritty, uh, certainly undersized for a middle linebacker, which was a major concern at the beginning of last year. And after about a scrimmage, maybe 10 plays, we realized that the, that the size doesn't matter if you have the heart and the, and the drive that he has. He's always in the right spot. He plays with great discipline. It's great in pass coverage, and, and um, you know, he's another, another emotional leader. He plays with a lot of fire. Um, Jordan McConnell is, is a little bit of everything. He, it, he's going to touch the ball a lot. I'll be a really bad coach if a game goes by and he's not touching the football a lot. Um, he'll play running back for us. He'll play wide receiver. He'll take snaps at quarterback and wildcat. He'll return kicks. Um, we haven't put it in yet, but when we go to nickel, he'll be running in and covering the other team's best receiver. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to exhaust his talents, that is for sure. And, and Noah, you know, Noah's, um, I'm going to embarrass him here, but if you've seen Hoosiers, he's kind of like Jimmy Chipwood. He's quiet, just kind of goes through it, very natural in everything he does. Um, played defensive back last year, last two years actually, um, as a starting safety. We're looking at him playing linebacker this year, also plays running back, um, but very intellectual, very smart, could play any position on our field probably. 
with the exception of maybe offensive line. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if he can throw either, so probably not quarterback. Coach, but, uh, but we'll see. He's very versatile. I'm sorry, Coach. Could maybe you, you elaborate a little more on some of your other playmakers uh, offensively and defensively. I know you have a new quarterback this year. Just maybe some other guys that might fly under the radar for you. Yeah, I, th- I mean, I, I think every team, especially offense, it, it starts at quarterback, and, and, and I love our quarterback this year, Andrew Fair. Um, you know, he played a lot of snaps last year as a sophomore, um, you know, started and played the whole Colerain game. But he's very cerebral. He's a really good leader. Um, you know, it, sometimes it's hard when you're a junior to be vocal, and he's, he's doing that and, and trying to do that. Um, as we move forward, but he's got a very natural throwing motion. He's very accurate. Um, you know, I think he'll do a good job of getting the ball to the guys we need to get the ball to. Um, up front, we return a lot of guys um, from last year on the offense and defensive line. We return about 17 starters in all. Um, you know, but certainly up front, a lot of the kids that were first time sophomores or first time juniors are now back as. You know, they've changed their bodies in the offseason and they're much more knowledgeable. Or last year, we, we kind of struggled there because everybody was learning how to play varsity football, especially early on. And uh, this year, we're not, not struggling with that. But I expect big years from um, Andrew, like I said. Gordy Annapool sitting in the crowd out there, his wide receiver and, and safety. Uh, we're going to count on him a lot. Uh, Kai Williams on the defensive line is a big, powerful uh, tackled. It's going to be a defensive end. It's going to be hard to hard to contain. And you know, I'm excited. We got a, we got a lot of guys that that have been on the field a lot. I could tell in your voice that, that you've been waiting for this opportunity for yep. quite some time. Jordan, you were kind of nodding your head as we were making that that GMC discussion a little bit earlier. But is there a chip on your shoulder a little bit? I mean, Coach mentioned, hey, we may not have the five-star guys or the recruiting rankings or everything, but at the end of the day, this is high school football. It's not projections at the next level. Talk about that a little bit. Um, for, so being here for the last few years, watching um, some of our other teams play, I think it would be considered a chip on our shoulder because we do play those teams with D1 prospects, those, those guys that are really good going to the next level. But um, I think that we focus more on ourselves. We focus more on what we can do to better ourselves. And I think that that's the biggest, the biggest change and the biggest focus on any other, the difference between us and any other team in the GMC is even though we don't have those guys, we focus on what we can do to make ourselves better. Noah, tell me about uh, what Sycamore football means to you when you run out there on a Friday night. Uh, I mean, it's it's everything, you know. I've been here the past couple of years and just running out on that field every night. I just, the adrenaline rush is surreal, and I just can't wait to get after it this season. And, and Nick, same thing for you. I mean, what, what's it been like just to go through this program? Are, are you able to reflect on, you know, being a senior and just kind of what this, uh, this team, this school has meant to you? I can't, um, like, appreciate it enough because I grew up for Sycamore football and just watching – kids that I played with play in the high school and then I want to be that kid like it just means so much in Sycamore to have a to be on the football team and to run out there for the Friday night for your team for your school like it's an it's a crazy moment really like you get a crazy feeling when you walk into that field in that stadium on a Friday night. Apollo coach mentioned you're one of the vocal leaders if not the vocal leader of this team Um, how do you kind of plan to you know express that leadership uh, throughout this year? Um well, I just always try to put my input in how people can always do things better and how we always need to keep up our energy, even when it gets hard, even when it's 95 degrees on a second practice and the sun's beaming down on us. We got to keep on keeping that energy up and keep on playing hard. Well, guys, I really want to appreciate I really want to thank you for your time and perspective uh, today. I appreciate uh, you being here again. Uh, Sycamore. Uh, Senior football players and captains, Apollo Ford, Jordan McConnell, Noah Blaze, and Nick Stevenson, along with head football coach Scott Dottillo. Thanks, guys, and best of luck to the Aviators this year. Thank you, you, Mike. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And right up next, we're going to have Indian Hill head football coach Tony Akuri, along with a couple of his players, talking about the Braves in this upcoming season.
As a reminder, this High School Insider podcast is presented by our local Chick-fil-A restaurants where the play of the game is always chicken. Try their grilled chicken nuggets with some Chick-fil-A sauce today. And again, we want to thank everybody with the Sycamore football program for joining us today. And we're going to bring in Indian Hill coach Tony Akuri. And Tony has brought senior quarterback Trey Lopez and also senior offensive lineman, defensive lineman Charlie Lindbergh. Guys, thanks for joining us, first of all. Oh, thanks, Mike. Uh, you know, listen, before we get started, uh, you guys do such a great job of covering high school football and um, getting exposure to our kids. It's, um, it's just great every year. It keeps getting better. Appreciate it, Tony. Thank you very much. Um, well, hey, the Braves were 9-3 and three in a Division Four regional semifinalist last season. Um, Indian Hill, as you well know, Tony, and, and guys up here, uh, four consecutive postseason appearances and five consecutive winning seasons for the Braves. I guess I'll just st start out by asking you, Tony, what you like most about the team this, so far this summer. You know, it's, it's one of the, the things that I, uh, I preach about the most. Uh, what, the word that I use a lot, they get sick of hearing it, is uh, consistency. Uh, that's probably the thing I like about this team the most. If you think about during the course of the summer, um, with our two days as well as our uh, you know ten days that OSHA allows us to have throughout the months of June and July, uh, we're well over, gosh, we're well over probably 40 practices. Uh, and I, I will tell you this: we haven't had one throwaway yet, and uh, that's an anomaly when it comes to high school football. Usually, within the course of those 40 or so practices, you're going to have a couple bad ones. Um, you know, knock on wood, and we haven't had one yet. What do you attribute that buy-in to from your players? You know, a lot of it is the fact that these guys, uh, you know, have been in the program uh, for four straight or three straight years. Uh, they were part of the program when they were junior high um, players as well. And I think with that comes a recognition of expectations. Um, you know, this is how we perform as a team. This is how we perform as a program. And, um, you know, they just... They know what's expected of them, I guess, is probably the best way to look at it. I'll ask Charlie and Trey a little bit about the commitment to the football program. But, Coach, we were kind of talking off camera just about, you know, the buy-in, the participation of football across the board, across the city, across the state. Um, you know, it's a hard sport. It, it takes a lot of commitment. It takes a lot of hard work. I mean, everybody knows that. Um, but, you know, how, how, is your, how has that impacted your coaching style maybe over the years and, and just being able to communicate and build that link with not only your players, but your coaches and also the families and boosters and everybody associated with the program? Right. I, I think it really comes back to something I mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, if you're clear and consistent with your expectations, uh, both for your players as well as their families, uh, you're going to make your life a lot easier. And... Um, you know, football is a, it's an extremely difficult sport, and that's not to, to disparage other sports, but, uh, you know, the, the commitment and the buy-in and the sweat equity that you have to put into football, I think is probably greater than any other sport, you, uh, sport that's out there, and I take that very seriously. Um, you know, I'm not just the head coach of Indian Hill High School, which I'm very proud to be, uh, but I also want to be a good steward for our sport because I think, uh, you know, we're facing kind of a rough time now. You know, kids have so many choices. They can do a lot of different things. And so for young men to come out, as the Sycamore uh, players were alluding, and just put all that time and effort into uncomfortable circumstances, I think that deserves and, and demands a lot of respect. Charlie, I want to start with you. Um, t tell me about just what Indian Hill football means to you, and uh, tell me a little bit about what this uh, upcoming season may hold for the Braves. Uh, for me, it's always been about playing for the community. We're in a small town, kind of uh, playing with my, for my family, all the students I know. Um, it's something I've always enjoyed. I've played since I was really young and uh, look forward to a good season and uh, closing out my career. Trey, tell me about just you know being committed to this program and, and what it takes to play for the Braves at such a high level. Um, well, ever since a freshman, they've always, even the upperclassmen, they've always pushed us to be great because... Um, the past couple of years that we've, we've had great records and we've all worked hard during the summer and preseason. So uh, yeah, it's just, I'd rather, I don't know, just take time out of my day to play football, I guess, because I, I love it, but um, yeah. How much fun do you have playing? How much fun do you have playing for the Braves? Oh, I, I've, I've been playing since I have five and I just, I, I enjoy it. I like, I like the grind and I like working hard and I like getting better. As, as, as a person, so yeah. 
Let's talk about this uh, outlook for the team this year, Coach. Uh, open up at New Richmond, and I looked it up. I did my homework. The eighth consecutive season you played New Richmond in the season opener. Uh, you've only lost twice to the to the Lions. Um, what, what's the reason behind uh, why that makes such a good opener for you and, and for New Richmond? Well, one thing you got to worry about in your off season or off uh, league schedule, uh, when you start thinking about playoff points and qualifying for the playoffs, you know, you have to schedule people that you believe are going to win football games. Uh, once you get into your league, it becomes kind of a war of attrition uh, because, you know, team A is beating team B and you're going to play team B later on. And so it's kind of a wash. Um, you know, New Richmond works for us because I believe every year they're going to win seven, eight football games. Uh, and that makes us uh, a great opponent for them because we're going to do the same. Um, you know, so it's it, it, it's kind of a nerve wracking one to start off with because, you, you know, it's so important uh, nine or ten weeks from now. And talk about the CHL this year. Obviously, everybody knows. And you know very well your rival, uh, Wyoming, won the Division Four state title last year and, and the talent that they have. But uh, just kind of around the CHL, just w what do you expect and how, how tough will that schedule be once you, once you get to that point? You know, I think, you know, there's, traditionally the past few years there's been kind of, you know, two or three, uh, you know, let's say, you know, top tier teams. And then there's been kind of a fight for the middle of the pack. Um, you know, and I kind of look at it the same way this year. Uh, I will say this, though, and, I, and, and my guys know this. It's certainly a league where you're going to have to show up and play. Um, because if you're not doing what you need to be doing, anybody can beat you. It, it's not like, um, you know, you, you can just show up and win. And, uh, you know, I think maybe there, there, there are probably some leagues around uh, around the state where maybe you can do that. I, I don't think this one is that. In fact, if you look at last year in an eight-team league, to have four of them qualify for the playoffs, um, I think that's pretty special, and that says a lot about the competition in our league. We'll talk more about the Braves here. I believe six starters return on offense and five on defense, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Is that right? Right. And, you know, that's a little skewed. Uh, I was thinking about this on the way over. Uh, certainly that number is correct. Um, but then I was thinking about, okay, who are we returning or playing uh, potentially that's going to start this season that has no varsity experience whatsoever? In other words, they, they haven't lettered. And uh, that's only one on offense and two on defense. So, um, you know, I, I think this is a pretty experienced group of kids. Um, I, I think we can be special. Uh, we just got to stay healthy. One of the things I thought was striking was you, you told me that the, this work ethic, the team cohesiveness, the overall strength, it's really been the best in the past six seasons. Um, yeah. Kind of talk about that commitment that, you know, it's not just showing up, like you said, it's not just taking the football field August 30th. It's the grind of, you know, the January workouts. And right. Talk about that commitment. We are stronger across the board as far as weight room strength, those kinds of things, um, than we've ever been. And, um, you know, Charlie sitting down here to my left actually um, is our uh, hand clean record holder for all time. Charlie, what's that? Two what? Uh, 275. 275, you know. Nice. Um, so what we don't have, and you kind of alluded to this uh, with, with the Sycamore folks, you know, last year we had two Division One recruits. Um, both of them are going to play Division One college football. We had a uh, Division Two recruit. He's going to play, you know, larger college football. Um, we don't have that this year. And so I think what happened in the offseason is there's a recognition that we can no longer say, well, you know, Jalen's going to fix it for us or Demetrius is going to fix it for us. Um, we have to say, no, I'll be the one that'll fix it. I'll fix it myself. And that collective mentality uh, produced it numbers in our weight room across the board that we haven't seen before. Um, we don't have the anomaly guy, but we've got 22, you know, blue collar guys that understand I can no longer say, uh, no, he's going to get it straight for us. I have to do it myself. Obviously referring to Jalen Thornton, who's at West Virginia, and Demetrius Baylor, who's at West Virginia State. Talk about these two guys here, Trey Lopez and Charlie Lindbergh. You brought them up here for a reason. Talk about what they've meant to your program. Well, you know, I think uh, they're actually, you bring, I bring them for two completely different reasons. Um, Charlie is just your quintessential, uh, in my mind, your quintessential lineman. I mean, he is, 
uh, you know, he's very blue collar. I call him, you know, I call him blue collar Charlie uh, for a lot of different reasons, but he is, you know, in, in a loving way, you're, you know, he's just a grunt. He loves being in the trenches. He loves working hard. He's a great leader. Um, he communicates uh, well to our younger players. Uh, he's not flashy. He just gets a job done. And I think that's the kind of people every, that's the kind of person every kind of football coach wants. Uh, Trey is very different. Um, Trey is a lot more flashy. Trey um, does everything for us. He can play, he could play every position on the field. Um, punt return, kick return. You know, he can, he is, you know, not that he and Charlie are all that different, but uh, Trey's kind of a highlight reel guy. And I think Charlie could just live without being on the highlight reel. <laughs> Very well said. <laughs> Charlie and Trey, I want to ask you about what Indian Hill football has meant to you. And just, you know, walking out on that field at Tomahawk Stadium on a Friday night, just such a cool atmosphere. The, the stadium's kind of tucked back there behind the school. And, um, you know, Charlie, I guess, first of all, tell me about what it's been like the past few years and how special that is. Uh, it's really been amazing. I've got to play with great players, as we named before. Um, but I was just playing for the community uh, in front of everyone, a small stadium, small school. Uh, it's something I love and uh, want to give up for anything. Trey, what about you? Yeah, I have to agree with Charlie. Um, I love playing um, in front of my uh, fellow students and friends, and I love playing for my family. And it's just, it's really cool because we're not a big school, so everyone shows up to games, and you know everyone that's there. And, like, after games, everyone's always, like, saying good job and all that. So it's just, it's a really good, cool experience. Maybe as seniors, it's a little bit different dynamic, but kind of take me through the locker room. Coach, maybe you can chime in here. Just... You know, what's it like, especially that first game, that first home game? I mean, uh, do, you, do you give the players maybe a sense of, hey, put the nerves out of the, out of the, out of the way now? Or maybe it takes a first few plays or first few uh, scrimmages to, to kind of get it out of their system? Yeah, you know, it, I think we understand now um, that, uh, you know, I used to be very different. I used to be one of these guys that ran around and, and, and yelled and screamed and, and I got too old for that. And I, I, I think really what we've communicated to our players is it's really about executing. You know, um, emotion comes into it uh, because that's going to give you some work ethic and that's going to give you some drive. But none of that stuff really matters if you don't go out and execute, if you don't take care of what's in front of you. Um, so I think there's always going to be, you know, those jitters. There's always going to be that nervousness. But uh, I, I think we all know when it comes down to it, a whistle blows. It's, hey, am I, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing or am I not doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And, Coach, maybe some other players that might be making an impact for you. Could you maybe mention um, both sides of the ball, um, you know, even guys that might be flying under the radar this year? Yeah, I, I think, uh, I think uh, first of all, offensive line is going to be one of our strengths. Um, we return Matt Breedis there. He's been a two-year starter, started as a sophomore and a junior. Uh, we return Joey Sholley, who started last year uh, as a sophomore for us. Um, we've got a big, big body and a uh, kind of a newcomer, Grant Lanham, who's 6'4", 260 right now. I think he could probably be the next recruitable body out of Indian Hill High School. Um, Charlie Sumrall will be getting a lot of reps at back for us, who had a great um, JV season. Uh, we return our two split ends in Amari Whitehead and Luke Hammond. Uh, Alex Lindbergh is back at one of our slot positions offensively. So we got a lot of guys coming back there. Our, our entire secondary is back, uh, you know, led by Charlie Lindbergh, who was a first team all league player last year as a so or Charlie, sorry, Charlie De Janeiro. <laughs> who uh, was a first-team all-league player at safety last year, uh, three-year starter on his word. This will be his third year starting, uh, Will Kleekamp. So there's, there's a lot of weapons coming back and a lot of guys that are going to contribute. You mentioned Alex Lindbergh. And, Charlie, what's that like playing with, with your brother? And I guess, Coach, I would, I would ask you what it's like coaching both those guys. Charlie? It's, it's always really been fun. Uh, we play different positions, but uh, I love playing out with them. Uh, it's been a good time through uh, Pee Wee playing alongside them. What's yeah, you know, like it's they're they're very they're different, but it's hard for me to uh, explain how they're different. I know Alex Charlie's a little more uh, you know outgoing. He's a little more vocal. Alex is a is certainly a lot more kind of lead by example. Um, but I think in the, in the in the heart of them, they're kind of the you know they're they're very similar. They care about. Uh, doing well. They care about being thorough. Um, they're great young men, you know, beyond what they do on the football field. Um, 
I guess Charlie would just talk to you a little more than Alex would. I guess that's the best way to look at it. Well, guys, I really appreciate your time and perspective. Charlie Lindbergh, Trey Lopez, and head coach Tony Acuri. Best of luck to the Braves this 2019 season. Yeah, thanks, Mike. And again, uh, all the stuff you guys do for high school sports, it, it's wonderful. It's good stuff. Really appreciate it. That'll wrap up uh, today's WCPO High School Insider Podcast. I want to thank everybody here at Chick-fil-A, especially operator Garth Truder for all his hospitality. And again, this concludes our uh, third episode of the special, epi- special episode of the, of the WCPO High School Insider Podcast here at Chick-fil-A. Be sure to check us out uh, on WCPO.com. We have all these podcasts uh, archived for you as well. So thanks again. We will talk to you next week.